السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين والعاقبة المتقين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على عبدك ورسولك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا So I didn't get the better end of that deal Sheikh Abdul Nasser you were supposed to be up here massaging me man It's not cool I had nobody to massage me And then Dr. Abu Zaid was criticizing my techniques so that's why I'm giving a speech and I'm not a masseuse. So, <laughs> but um, as uh, Sheikh Abu Zaid mentioned, it's going to be extremely hard to cover. Actually, any Sahabi in 30 minutes is a formidable task. And I'm just going to, inshallah ta'ala, shed highlights on Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And usually when you're talking about the Sahaba, especially when you're talking about Khulafa al-Rashideen, no doubt about it that Uthman radiallahu anhu always kind of falls in between and he's usually the one that's least recognized. And I remember in Sunday school whenever they would ask us who the Khulafa al-Rashideen were, it would always be Abu Bakr, Umar, and then, you know, everyone struggled to remember the third one, right? And then you had Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu who because of all of the misconceptions surrounding his names, his name also has a much more prominent position at least in our conversations, in our halaqat, in our social circles. Then Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. But what many people may not know, and by the way, I, I feel very passionate about this. And actually, subhanAllah, the first halaqah I've ever given in my entire life was on Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Um, and Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu actually is the first person after the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the companions of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to have a book written about him from the companions. And Imam Al-Tirmidhi rahimahullah authored Manaqib Uthman, the virtues of Uthman. Before any other book on any other companion, you had a book on the virtues of Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And there are so many different things that I could shed light upon and, and definitely I don't encourage any of you to listen to these lectures and then to think that you've learned everything you need to learn about Khulafa al-Rashidin. Okay, so you need to go home and read the various biographies, the oceans of biographies of these four men in particular because there are so many different lessons that we could take. Not only that, but I guarantee you, Sheikh Abu Zaid and Sheikh Abdul Nasser and Sheikh Mukhtar who spoke before, I guarantee you that all of them have done more extensive lectures on the Sahaba so it becomes even harder and tougher than to shed light or to, to take a snippet of 30 minutes of their lives. Naturally, when you speak about Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? I'm just, someone tell me, yeah, huh? Shyness, haya, that's number one. There's a second one. Two defining features about Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Dhun we'll talk about that insha'Allah. The other one is his generosity. His shyness and with his shyness, with his haya, comes shyness, softness, modesty, humility. And then the other concept, the other defining feature that you have about him is his generosity. To the point that the Messenger sallallahu uh, alayhi wa and by the way, Uthman radiallahu anhu inherited when his father died 30 million dirhams. Grew up in a very privileged household. But what you would find, and I'm just going to mention it briefly because this is not the, the attribute that I want to speak about in tonight, today's lecture. What you always find is that when Rasulullah would call people to give sadaqah, Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu was always one of the first to come forward. To the point in Ghazwa Tabuk, Uthman radiallahu anhu came forward with more than what the Messenger وسلم, was asking for. 100 camels became 200, became 300 until they became 1000. And Uthman radiallahu anhu keeps on putting that forward. And Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu then goes and brings 1000 gold coins and puts that in the lap of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is... is counting those coins and he's taking it between his fingers and he's saying nothing will harm Uthman radiallahu anhu after this day. Nothing. You can do whatever you want. Nothing will harm you today. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven you today. The other incident which he's famous for which is purchasing the well of Ruma, which was a well that was owned by one of the Jews of Medina that was placed in a strategic position, especially for Badr, Uthman radiallahu anhu was the one who bought that. Uthman radiallahu anhu was the one who financed the expansion of the masjid. Every time you have a door of sadaqah, he was foremost in that. But that's not the aspect that I want to talk about today. First and foremost, when we speak about Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, just to kind of give you a picture of who we're looking at. 
We're talking about the person that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says to his daughter Umm Kulthum radiallahu anha, who would be the wife of Uthman, that no man resembles more in physical appearance your father Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and your grandfather Ibrahim alayhi salam more than Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. When you read his description that he was not too tall, not too short, that he had long curly black hair, a touch of redness to his face, broad shoulders, and a small gap between his teeth. These are the descriptions of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he was so beautiful that Abdurrahman ibn Hazm radiallahu anhu, he says, I have never seen a man more beautiful in my life than Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Extremely handsome, extremely modest, to the point that it was said about him by, in, the, in the narration of Al-Hasan radiallahu ta'ala anhu, even when he's changing his clothes, behind closed doors, he feels a sense of shyness. That when he gave bay'ah to the Messenger وسلم, with his right hand, he refused to ever use that right hand to touch his private parts again after that. That he was so humble in his talk, so modest and soft-spoken, that you would have to come so close to him just to hear what he was trying to tell you. So he didn't have a commanding voice, he had a very soft voice. Very soft-spoken individual. And the Messenger وسلم, who was known for his bashfulness, known for his haya admired Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu to the point that Aisha radiallahu anha narrates an incident that once the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sitting down and he was reclining and part of his thigh was exposed sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu walked in he sat with the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not sit up he spoke with him, he left Omar came in, he sat with the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he spoke with him and then he left and then Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu sought permission to come in. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sat up and he covered himself and he made sure that he was proper. And Aisha radiallahu anha says, Ya Rasulullah, we know that Abu Bakr and Umar are more virtuous than Uthman. How come when they came in, you didn't sit up, you didn't fix yourself or anything in that regard. But when Uthman came in, you, you fixed yourself in that way. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the very famous statement, أَلَا أَسْتَحِي مِنْ رَجُلٍ يَسْتَحِي مِنْهُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ تَسْتَحِي مِنْهُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ Shouldn't I be ashamed or shy from a man who even the angels are shy in his presence? Even the angels were shy in the presence of Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And I want to particularly though shed light on one of the least talked about aspects about him, which was his response to adversity. Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu sought the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went out of his way to show Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu that he loved him. And for that reason, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's two daughters, first you see Ruqayya radiallahu ta'ala anha, who was married to who? Who was Ruqayya married to? Utba ibn, ibn Abi Lahab. Utba the son of Abu Lahab. And who was Umm Kulthum, his, sec his other daughter married to? Utayba, the son of Abu Lahab. And obviously when Islam came, these two women were left divorced. Fatima radiallahu anha was still very young. These two women were left divorced without husbands. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam marries to Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, his daughter Ruqayya radiallahu anha. Uthman who was famous for his modesty who was loved by his people. Naturally, when a person is soft, when a person is gentle with his people, when a person shows modesty, when a person shows humility, he is loved by his people. To the point that Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the women in Quraysh used to sing lullabies to their children. They used to say, Uhibbuka wa rahman I love you by Ar-Rahman. Hubba Quraysh in Uthman. The love that Quraysh has for Uthman. That's how much I love you. When I want to show my child how much I love them, I would tell them that Ruqayya radiallahu anha was also known for her modesty. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam pairs these two together. And when you have two beautiful people like this coming together, people used to even write poetry about their relationship with each other. About the way they used to treat one another. And from that relationship you have a son Abdullah ibn Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Now I want you to think about this. Everything is going as well as it could possibly go. Uthman radiallahu anhu enjoys a special relationship with the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's married to his daughter. He has the grandson of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
And then Ruqayya radiallahu anha gets sick. All of a sudden she's taken by a fever. On top of that, she's taken by this fever only days before Badr, days before the Muslims embark on Badr. And on the same day that the Muslims are given the victory of Badr, the, the news of the victory of, of the victory of Badr, Ruqayya radiallahu ta'ala anha passes away. The day of great joy and the day of great sadness. And then to add to that pain, just a short time afterwards, Abdullah, his son, is walking and he is pecked in the face by a bird and he's infected and he dies too. And Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu was so depressed, obviously. I mean, he lost his wife and his child just like that. And he's a human being radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And it got to the point that Uthman would come to the salah. He would not neglect his prayer. He would not neglect those things, but he would avoid communication with people because of his sadness. And this hurt the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He wanted to show Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu how much he loves him. So he goes to Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu and he says, What's wrong with you, O Uthman? What's making you so depressed? And Uthman radiallahu anhu answers with the obvious first, obviously the death of Ruqayya, but he says the death of Ruqayya and then something else. Something else is getting me down too. And Rasulullah says, what is that, Ya Uthman? And he says, Ya Rasulullah, in qata'a sayri wa qurbi minka bi mawtiha. My connection, my relationship with you, my kinship with you was severed by her death. Now obviously, when you're looking at the story from the outside, what you're thinking is, oh yeah, he's just saying that. He's just trying to sweet talk Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All the sahaba were trying to gain the pleasure of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's just coming from the tip of his tongue, but it's not from the heart. Obviously, the guy is depressed over the loss of his wife. But you want to know how truthful he was in that statement? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Jibreel alayhi salam came to me with an order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to marry my other daughter, Umm Kulthum radiallahu anha to him with the same dowry. Subhanallah. And that's where he gets the nickname, the Nurain the possessor of two lights. He had the only, he was distinguished in marrying two daughters of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Six years later, she passes away too. And Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu once again is sad. And listen to how much the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam loves him. He says to Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he says, Wallahi, if I had 40 daughters, I would marry each and every single one of them to you until each and every single one of them would die and I would be left with no daughters. Who else could have that, distingu that distinction like Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu? And that's, that's the love that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi had for him to the point that we even see in Hudaybiyyah when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi sends Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu to negotiate with Quraysh. He was a noble man of Quraysh as an ambassador from the Muslims. And Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu was held up over there with Quraysh. And the rumor reaches the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Uthman passed away. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who has an unarmed group of men, he takes bay'ah, the allegiance of Ridwan, bay'at al-Ridwan, which is narrated to us in the Qur'an, in Surah Al-Fatih. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam takes a bay'ah, an allegiance, a pledge from each and every single one of the believers that we will fight on behalf of Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. The death of Uthman is where we draw the line. And to the extent that after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took allegiance from everybody, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam takes his right hand and he takes his left hand and he clasps his hand together and he says, وَهَذِهِ عَنْ Uthman," And this is for Uthman. He, he takes his own allegiance sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Imam Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah, he says, Oh, how I wish to have been the hand of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on that day. And then of course it turned out that Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu had not passed away and that was just a rumor but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ يُبَايِعُونَكَ تَحْتَ الشَّجَرَةِ فَعَلِمَ مَا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ فَأَنزَلَ السَّكِينَةَ عَلَيْهِمْ وَأَثَابَهُمْ فَتْحَ
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Verily, laqad lit-tahqiq wa ta'kid. Laqad, there is no doubt about it. Every single person who took allegiance to you that day under the tree in Bay'atul Ridwan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was pleased with them. Allah azza wa jal knew what was in their hearts. Look how much, look at the love, the extent of love that they had. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewarded them and Allah azza wa jal promised them a conquest that was soon to come. And some of the Mufassireen say, this bay'ah was the sabab, was the reason through which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted the believers victory. Because of their willingness to stand on that day. If that's not enough, Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu anhu, he says that, Uthman, that Rasul, I once saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa raising his hands from the beginning of the night until the end of the night saying, Allahumma inni raditu an Uthman farda anhu. Oh Allah, I am pleased with Uthman, so be pleased with him. This tale of love between the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa and Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, this story of love, you can only imagine how it was like when he passed away sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It was so much so that Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, that what's narrated about him in the books of Sirah Fasakata Uthman, that he became silent to the point that people thought he was mute. People thought that he lost his ability to speak. He was so taken aback by the death of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he no longer was able to speak. But we see that this story continues on and on. And the love and the desire that Uthman radiallahu anhu had for Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam does not end with the death of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the khilaf of Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and I fast forward through all the conquests because there were conquests. And I fast forward through the first 10 years of contribution. And there were many contributions from him radiallahu anhu. And we go to his moment of adversity. We go to the fitna that was caused in this ummah from one man, Abdullah ibn Saba, who was financed from the outside to cause division within the Muslim ummah. And who started his division, who started his fitna with going to Kufa and Iraq and asking questions here and there, trying to shake people's faith. And Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, because of his leniency, would not crush that revolt. When Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu had someone doing the same thing that Abdullah ibn Saba did by the name of Usaybih, Umar radiallahu anhu said, bring him here, bring him to Medina, bring him from Iraq. And he lashed him so severely, and then he sent a note back with him, that says anyone who talks to him is going to be lashed too. And that's why when Abdullah ibn Saba came to Usaybih and he tried to get him to join, Usaybih raised his, uh, his shirt and he said, الصالح, The righteous man taught me a lesson. In slang that would be, or I shouldn't give the slang one. <laughs> but nah bruh, it's not a good idea. <laughs> and they continue this fitna and you have these people this fitna rising from all the corners of the Muslim world. And Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, because of his leniency, does not act harshly towards them, but instead he replaces governors as they request. And he acts towards them with softness. Until they finally lay the house of Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu under siege. And for this ordeal of over 40 days, Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who at that point, was 82 years old, would be forbidden water from the same well that he purchased for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, would be forbidden to pray in the same masjid that he financed its expansion, the masjid of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, would be treated in the most humiliating manner. And this is something that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in many different ahadith, he warned Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu that this would happen. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in a tirmidhi and hakim from Aisha radiallahu anha, that he said to Uthman radiallahu anhu, O oh Uthman, perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shall clothe you with a garment. And if the hypocrites demand that you remove it from yourself, do not remove it until you meet me. لا تنزع قميصا قمصك الله بها. Do not take off a garment that Allah subhanahu wa taala placed upon you. And what was Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم talking about? He was talking about the khilafah. In many different incidents, in one, 
that was narrated from Ubay radiallahu ta'ala anhu that once the Sahaba were sitting in Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu was wrapped up in a garment. His face was wrapped. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that this man will be upon truth and guidance and he will be killed because he will refuse to take off a garment which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed upon him. And whenever he removed his, his, his face wrap, it was Uthman radiallahu anhu. Perhaps the most heart-wrenching incident of all. Aisha radiallahu anha says, and this is in Ahmed, an authentic hadith, that once the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa told Uthman radiallahu anhu, come close. And he started to whisper into his ear. And as he would whisper into his ear, Uthman radiallahu anhu would move away and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa would say, did you understand? And Uthman radiallahu anhu would say, yes. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa would say, come close. And he would keep on whispering in his ear until the face of Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu started to change colors. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa kept on telling him, did you understand? He said, Naam ya Rasulullah, I understood, O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so when this fitna comes, I simply, I just want to mention the incidents that Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu goes through in which he prohibits the Sahaba from fighting on his behalf and he says, I do not want a single drop of blood being shed in my cause. But still with that, Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu places his children al Hassan wal Hussein to guard Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Az Zubair radiallahu ta'ala anhu places his son Abdullah ibn Zubair. So the children of the greatest Sahaba are guarding Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu and Uthman is telling them, do not shed a drop of blood in my cause. Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu is begging him that we have to foil this, this fitna, we have to foil this plot and he's consistently refusing and we saw the rudeness the, the harsh heartedness, that, the harsh hearts that these people had when they treated Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu worse than a prisoner would be, would be treated. And they started to come closer and closer on his house. And they set his gate on fire. And one man jumps into the back of Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu's house. And he says, leave it and we will leave you. And Uthman radiallahu anhu wanted to leave the Khilafah, but he was reminded by Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, do not leave a garment, do not take off a garment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed upon you. And Uthman radiallahu anhu says to that man, woe to you, wallahi, I have never uncovered a woman in jahiliyyah. Don't you know there are women in this house other than, there's women in this house, I'm not the only one in this house. And that man became ashamed. And he left there and he left the fitna and he sought forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the next incident that takes place is they started to throw stones in the house of Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And they started to try to pelt him with those stones. And Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he, he stands out, he says outside of his window, don't you know that in this house there are others than me and you might harm them? And look at the, the level that these people reached. They said to him, they said, we didn't throw the stones at you. He said, then who threw them? They said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala threw them at you. And he said to him, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala disgrace you. You are a liar because if Allah threw a stone at me, he wouldn't have missed. And that person left the fitna and he sought forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the people of fitna started to say, alaqna, he, he, he suspended us, wallah. He put us in a situation that we're not able to do anything to him. Then they started to decide upon who would murder him. So first they send in a man and he comes to Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu and he raises his sword right in the face of Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu says, where are you from? And he says, Banu Layth. Uthman radiallahu anhu said, you're not the one. And he said, why? He said, because Rasulullah sallallahu made dua for your tribe. That man puts down his sword and he runs away and he seeks forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Next, Uthman radiallahu Next, another man is sent in to kill Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And he stands in front of him right about to strike him and Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu says, you're not the one. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa made dua for your tribe. It's not going to be you. And then that man runs away and he seeks forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then comes a day that Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the one who at, it has been confirmed 
from Ibn Hajar radiallahu rahimahullah ta'ala, one of the only people who read the entire Quran in one rak'ah. The person who used to stand in night in Qiyam. That some of the Sahaba, Abdullah ibn Abbas and Abdullah ibn Umar, they even said when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the people who are qani to an ana'ul layl, the people that are standing up in prayer all night and day, that was about Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And the one who used to keep the habit of fasting even in his old age. On that day of Thursday, July 16th, Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, while he's reading Quran, and he's sitting down, this 82 year old man, he dozes off and he falls asleep at the time of Salatul Asr. And he was fasting that day because it's the day of Thursday and that was the sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to fast that day. And he sees in his dream Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam standing in front of him, smiling and behind him is Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu anhuma. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Ya Uthman, O oh Uthman, hal mana'uka anil ma'at? Did they forgive you? Did they forbid you from water? And he said, Naam ya Rasulullah. And he said, Ya Uthman, did they forbid you from food? And he said, Naam ya Rasulullah, they forbade me from food. And he said, Ya Uthman, did they forbid you from praying salah in my masjid? And he said, Naam ya Rasulullah, they forbade me from praying salah in your masjid. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then says to Uthman radiallahu anhu, the one who he loved so much to the point that he spent a whole night making dua for his pleasure. The one who Uthman radiallahu anhu became mute at his death. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says to him, he says, Abshir ya Uthman. Good news, O Uthman. Sofa tuftiru indana hadihi layla. You're going to break your fast with us tonight. SubhanAllah. And the people around Uthman radiallahu anhu, they see Al Hassan wal Hussein and the women in his household, they see the tears coming down his eyes. And he wakes up full of joy. Full of joy. This was the goal of these men. And he relates his dream to the people. No sooner does he narrate his dream, dream to his wife Na'ila radiallahu anha and Al-Hassan wal Hussein and those who are around him, except that they storm the house. And as they storm the house and they stand in front of him, Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu was sitting down, 82 years old, reading Surah Al-Baqarah and not paying any attention to them. And the people take a moment and they stop their fitrah. They stop, they look at him and they don't know what to do. Look at this man and his khushur. How could we kill this man? Until Al-Ghafiqi, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala curse him, strikes Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu in the face with a piece of iron. And the blood comes running down and it falls on the ayah, فَسَيَكْفِي كَهُمُ اللَّهِ وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ He was reading that ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will suffice for you against them. And Allah is the all-hearing and the all-knowing. Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr, who was caught up in the fitna, comes to Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And he grabs his beard, about to strike him. And Uthman radiallahu anhu says, faqad kana abuka yukrimuha. Let go of my beard because your father used to honor it. When I meet your father in Jannah, I don't want to tell him that you were the one who killed me. And Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr runs away from that incident and then comes Sudan and you can see the evil that these people had in their hearts and he stabs Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu nine times screaming in rage and he says three times for Allah and six times for the hate that I have for you. And he murders Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu in that state. And Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu has iftar that night as we know, because whoever sees Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his sleep has seen him in reality. We know that he had iftar that night with his companions, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abu Bakr as-Siddiq, and Umar, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with them. And on that same ayah where the blood of Uthman radiallahu anhu fell, 
until today, if you go to the museum in Turkey that has that mushaf, you see the stain from the blood of Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And these people, they robbed everything that he had. They stole everything from Baytul Mal. And you know what? The promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came true. فَسَيَكْفِي كَهُمُ اللَّهِ Each and every single person who participated in the murder of Uthman radiallahu anhu was murdered in this dunya. Each and every single one of them. These people did not even allow Uthman radiallahu anhu to have a public janazah because they did not want the emotions of the people to be stirred. So they did not even allow him to be buried during the day and only Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu and a group of sahaba were allowed to bury him in the nighttime and they didn't want him buried in Al-Baqir. They didn't want him being buried in the graveyard next to the, next to the mosque of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because they did not want his grave to be a place that would evoke sympathy. But you know what happened? Later on, as the Baqir grew, the grave of Uthman radiallahu anhu became part of it anyway. And we go to one hadith, and I'll close with this, in which Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrates a very famous hadith, where he says that one day, one day, a day went long, and Rasulullah sallallahu did not come to the masjid. So the Sahaba started to inquire about him. This was the life of the Sahaba. Where is the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? I want to be with him. I want to follow him. I want to learn some ahadith. The Sahaba started to follow, trying to find him. And Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, until I followed his steps asking about him, and I came to a place, a well, a garden of Aris. And I walked in there, and I found that Rasulullah sallallahu had relieved himself and performed wudu. And I went to him and he was sitting with his legs uncovered and he had his, his legs inside a small well. Rasulullah was taking a break, contemplating in a time of peace. And Abu Musa radiallahu ta'ala anhu says, so I decided that I was going to stand guard. And then Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu came. And by the way, every time you read about Rasulullah being in a place, the same order of companions coming. By fitrah. Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu came inquiring about the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abu Musa radiallahu anhu says, I asked Rasulullah sallallahu if Abu Bakr can come in. Rasulullah sallallahu says, I'dhan lahu wa bashirhu bil jannah. Tell him to come in and give him the glad tidings of paradise. So Abu Bakr came in and he sat right next to Rasulullah sallallahu He uncovered his legs and he dangled them in the well. And Abu Musa says, I started to make dua, I started to pray that the next person that would come would be my brother. Because I knew that the person that would come would be a person of good fortune. And then Umar radiallahu anhu came. And he asked permission to enter. And, he, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, give him permission wa bashirhu bil jannah. And grant him the, the glad tidings of paradise. So Umar radiallahu anhu walks in and he sits to, he sits to the left of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He uncovers his legs and he dangles them next to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then the next person comes, Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And he's seeking permission to enter. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Give him permission to enter. وَبَشِّرْهُ بِالْجَنَّةِ عَلَىٰ بَلْوَةُ تُصِيبُهُ Give him the glad tidings of paradise as a result of a tragedy that's going to strike him. And Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, Allah al-musta'an, I will be patient. And he walks in, and there is no place to sit next to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So he sits across from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and Abu Bakr and Umar and Sa'id ibn al-Musayyib radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He says, I interpreted this to be the graves of the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said that everyone in Jannah has a rafiq. Everyone in Jannah has a close friend. A rafiq is someone that always keeps you company. وَرَخْفِيقِي فِي الْجَنَّةِ عُثْمَان And my rafiq, my close friend in Jannah is Uthman. I ask you with one question only. Who do you want to be with at the moment of your death? Who do you want to be with in al-barzakh? Who do you want to be with in al-jannah? سَتَكُونَ مَعْ مَنْ أَحْبَبْتْ You will be with the one whom you loved. And no one loved Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa like his companions 
and that is why they were granted this privilege. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to have that vision and that insight and to live our lives in a way that is pleasing to him according to the sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to allow us to be gathered in al Jannatul Firdaus with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with al Khulafa al Rashidin, may Allah be pleased with them and with those who followed in his path sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to reflect on these moments with them to say I came to a YM conference and I heard Sheikh Abu Zayd talking about you, O Omar. I came to a YM conference and I heard Sheikh Abdul Nasser talking about you, O Ali. We ask Allah to make them our neighbors in Al Jannah. Allahumma ameen. Jazakum Allah khair ala husni istima'akum. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Subhanakum wa bahamdika shadu wa la ilaha ant astaghfiruka wa atubu alaykum. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.